Hey guys, I'm sure Commander Shudate and Reach Out of Legends with another champion guide, this time on Dagger, a rare Banner Lord Void Affinity Champion. Today we have just but one request for poor Dagger uh, from uh, Zodu Fen Schmertz. Hopefully I said that right. Anyway, please do a dagger guide, Ash. TIA, love to see your vids. Thanks. What does TIA stand for? I'm so not hip. I have no idea. Uh, hopefully it's something kind. Anyway, guys, let's take a look at dagger. So as we mentioned, Dagger is a, she's not an old school champion. She was added a few years ago to the game. Uh, she is a Banner Lord, a rare attack based champion. Her base attack isn't too bad at 1387. She's very squishy, a 12K HP and 793 on the defense. So she can barely take a hit. She will uh, fall over at any uh, breathing on her. Will uh, even despite this amazing uh, helmet here, she's, uh, she's still pretty squishy. Her armor leaves a lot to be desired, but that, that face will never know what Dagger truly looks like behind that helm. Uh, so what does she do? On the A1, she's a two-time hitter. Each critical hit decreases the target's term year by 4%. On the A2, it is Precision Sabotage on a three-turn cooldown when booked, and it would definitely behoove you to book out this champion. It's an AoE on, again, a three-turn uh, cooldown. She brings the big version of decreased defense. So 75%, 80% with the uh, the sniper mastery uh and it's not bad i mean she's a really good option i put her in the category of i don't know maybe like a, fl a flesh monger in terms of a rare decreased defense aoe option she's not going to be as good as a war maiden because even though she's void affinity uh war Maiden has 100 percent. and when we look for decreased defense we want it at 100 percent. ideally we'd have a void 100 percent decreased defense champion but dagger is almost there not quite there. That doesn't mean she has no use cases in the game. It means that 80% on an AoE on a three turn cooldown is so close, but no cigar. Anyway, Sword Break Knife. Sword Break Knife on a, a three turn cooldown when booked attacks one enemy, 75% chance to place a weak version of decreased attack, has a 75% chance to place a big version of increased attack instead if the target is under a decreased defense debuff. So this actually makes her kit a lot better with the A3 because now we have a chance to land the big version of the decreased defense and then come back in and land the big version of decreased attack both on a three turn cooldown. Down. So you can definitely get some utility out of her. Where are we going to be using Dagger? Well, first, let's finish off the kit here. Attack in Faction Crips by 20%. Faction Crips as a debuffer would be one area that we can use her. Also, in Curse City, extremely restrictive content. Uh, also, just kind of in progression where we need a debuffer, right? The downside is, again, it's tough to keep her alive, and we will try to mitigate that downside uh, in the build that we're going to showcase today. Uh, on HellHades.com, they rank her a... Come on, a three overall grading. There we go. Uh, they give her a score, you know, clan boss, three and a half. If you're clan boss progression and you get dagger, it's a tough, it's a tough question here because I want to say, yeah, absolutely use dagger. She's gonna be great for you. But also, I think you'll probably get better options fairly quickly inside the game. I think she's a champion that you should absolutely consider taking to five stars, okay? And even booking her out, especially if you have the rare skill tomes kind of sitting around, uh, book her out, take her to five stars, use her for clan boss progression, use her to help out in faction wars. And then later on in a year or two or whenever, in the end game, it actually might have, or you might have some justification taking her to six stars for some secret room content or some restrictive content. Again, either Doom Tower Secret Rooms or Curse City. Uh, we will show some Doom Tower Secret Room action in today's video. But that would be the case where I would consider perhaps taking her to six stars. But then again, it all comes down to War Maiden. War Maiden is just a better champion, I think. You know, she doesn't have the decreased attack, though. So I guess you could give the uh, the nod to uh, Dagger in some areas, such as, again, Clan Boss. Uh, but she doesn't need to be six stars fully maxed out in order to take advantage of her in Clan Boss either. Uh, in Dungeon Progression, a.k.a. the non-hard version of Dungeons, she can be a very competent champion. Uh, in the Arena, I'd much rather have 
a War Maiden again, because the decreased attack on a single target isn't as necessary or useful in the arena. Uh, moreover, we really want that AoE on the decreased defense, but you can absolutely use her in the early game in the arena as your debuffer as well. Just make sure she goes, obviously, faster than your nuker. Uh, Doom Tower, Frost Spider, Eternal Dragon. Again, uh, she can be a competent boss debuffer with the big version of decreased defense and weaken, uh, or excuse me, decreased defense and uh, decreased attack. So we have a 1.65 multiplier on her A1. We have a 3.65 multiplier on her A2. That's the AOE. And then we have a 5.8 multiplier on her A3. What does that mean? It means she actually smacks pretty hard with her A3 for a rare champion. Uh, again, a 5.8 is really... I mean, there's a lot of legendaries that have 5.8. The only difference is, is her base attack isn't that high. But for a rare, almost 1,400 base attack, well, that's not bad at all. Actually, I don't even have her built to be like a nuker. But I'm curious. I think I'm in Platinum Arena right now. So definitely not the area to showcase her. Actually fell out, so that's good. Uh, I just want to see a quick damage check on her in the arena and then i'll show you the build sorry for going kind of out of order in today's video by the way in case you missed it if you're watching this video in real time uh i have a interview that just went live on my main youtube channel ash raid shadow legends uh with a free to play uh and i just released it that's why it's fresh in my mind right now you guys gotta check that out uh just I don't know, YouTube search Ash free-to-play Boozer, B-O-O-Z-O-R. It was great. One of my favorite interviews ever on the channel. And now in like three or four days, I have another big interview coming up with the end game, like one of the top end game live arena uh, players out there talking about live arena meta and stuff like that. Anyway, sorry for plugging my other channel. That's something I do often here, but I apologize. All right, so let's just see what kind of damage she can do. I do have her built with like close to 100% crit rate, but in a lifesteal build, which we'll talk about in a moment. Let's test the damage on her A3 here with nothing, no increased attack or anything. Yeah, I mean, not bad. Not bad, right? Not bad. You could definitely get some damage. And look at that. Dagger versus Valken and takes down the Void Legendary and puts me into Platinum. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So, you know, she can deal a little damage and be a nice debuffer for the arena for early game, for early game. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take another quick look at this build. Uh, recently used first. And there she is. So we have her in an accuracy set and a lifesteal set. I'm trying to choose options for gear that is going to be available in the early and the mid game uh, where you might just need a debuffer, you know, uh, accuracy for, for obvious reasons and lifesteal heals by 30% of the damage dealt. As we saw, she can deal damage so she can keep herself alive, even though her base stats kind of suck. So... Uh, total stats, 37k, 2500, 3800 on the attack, 197, 92, 177 uh, on the crit rate, crit damage, 197 on the speed, and 393 on the accuracy. Not that ac that much accuracy is going to be required for early content in the game, but 393 will, you know, get you through anything that you need her for in the end game for that restrictive content that we're going to take a look at in a moment. So, this is the build I like. You could just because restrictive content is so predicated on having stun sets on so many champions, you could consider putting her in a stun set. I just think it's kind of a wasted sun stun set. You're kind of wasting your stun gear a little bit in that regard. But of course, you could take advantage because that's what we want all of our champions on pretty much right in the in the very difficult rare only content. I have phantom touch on her. I think it's the way to go, right? Uh, we get extra attack, some survivability, most importantly here as well. And it can make her a little bit more viable in an area like uh, Fire Knight, where we can get credit for three hits off that A1 with the Phantom Touch Blessing. Phantom Touch is the way to go for Dagger. Uh, Lifesteal, like I said, works. You could just throw her in speed gear. You could throw her in accuracy sets. In percep perception sets are going to be the best option for her. I put crit rate on the gauntlets because I don't want to throw away all that damage. Uh, so I went crit rate and I didn't stress out about finding, you know, 100% uh, crit rate. I just wanted to build her with some crit rate if I could. So that was able to get her to, you know, close to 100%. Uh, I went HP percentage on the chest. Both her defense and her HP both scale really, really poorly. So... I don't know. You can make a very compelling argument that you just build her super squishy. Hopefully you have a reviver on the team and you go attack percentage even in the early game. And I wouldn't necessarily argue with you, but I did go with HP percentage. Another note, her HP and her defense are so low that you could, you could go with flat stat 
if you had a good flat stat piece of gear with HP flat stat, defense flat, a flat stat, and it wouldn't be that much worse than going percentage because your stats are so low. That being said, it's still going to be better. But anyway, I went HP percentage. You can go, uh, I would go HP percentage or attack percentage if you just wanted to get some more damage out of her. Uh, we have lifesteal uh, speed boots. I want to see if I can get speed on the speed. Nope. We're doing some a nice attack there. I'll take it two levels up. Two level ascended. Uh, again, we're looking for accuracy in the substats to land her decreased attack and her decreased defense, right? So accuracy is going to be most important. And again, we want her faster than the nukers you're going to be using on your team so she can set the table with her decreased defense, ideally. Uh, so lifesteal and accuracy is the way that we have her built. Speed, crit rate, uh, HP percentage, accuracy on the banner, crit damage on the amulet, and defense on the ring. Uh, defense... And HP on the accessories is definitely going to be the way to go, adding a little bit of survivability onto this champion. Uh, okay, masteries. I haven't changed these masteries since the day that I had Dagger, and I don't think there's any need to. I went right down the left-hand side, picked up Warmaster for some damage, and on the right-hand side, I kind of hugged the right. Most importantly, Warmaster and Master Hexer and Sniper. Sniper to bump that up to an 80% chance to land the decreased defense on the AoE. And Master Hexer to extend the duration of both of the debuffs that she brings in her kit. All right, let's go ahead and try her out, guys. We already did a little tiny mini arena showcase here for you guys. I, I don't think that we need to uh, belabor that. She's not an arena nuker or anything like that, but she can hit, she can hit decently hard for a rare. Uh, let's go to Doom Tower. I saw that there was, she can't be used in that secret room, but she can be used in secret room nine here on Doom Tower Hard. She's going to be probably the only champion. I'm just going to fill the team up here. She's going to be the only champion that is not in a stun set on this team. I want to say, I'm not 100% sure on Ash Walker. Let me see what Ash Walker has on. And who knows? Oh, I always do that. I always search for the champion, and then I forgot that I have to go to this menu to see their gear. I wish you could just click on the champion and immediately see their gear. Yeah, Ash Walker is in a stun set as well. Uh, I think it's most important that she lands her debuffs, so a lot of accuracy, a decent amount of speed, survivability, stays alive, etc., etc., than it is necessarily making sure for PvE content... I think it's more important to do that than it is to ensure you're building your for, for a ton of damage. Of course, no stuns land. I might just kind of RNG reset the game right now if I wasn't recording. She did land the decreased defense on everybody. Moreover, she got an extension as well on Umbral Enchantress, which is nice. Uh, we're going to come in here with a two of Kurzard. He lands a couple of stuns. boy. We're going to come in here and land a stun over here. Decreased turn meter. And then we're going to actually deplete turn meter. Who is that in the back hiding? Solaris? Uh, we don't have to worry about Solaris. Let's go ahead and get him down. Do another AoE here with Kurzad. Uh, come in over there. Trying to land some. We're going to try out her A3 here. Uh, let's try to take a nice being Void Affinity. Ah! So at least we land the decrease. Well, it doesn't really matter there, right? <laughs> All right, AoE here. Hopefully we land a stun. We land one. We'll take it. A1 now, a Soulbound Boyer. Now we're cooking here. Now we're going to start cleaning up, uh, meaning we're only going to be using A1 abilities from here on out. Again, this is an all-rare team, and everybody's in stun sets. So the idea here is to control, 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 right? I forgot what Solaris even does, honestly. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, but I always do comment that I'm like I'm, I'm kind of a fan of the uh, the movie Solaris with uh, George Clooney. Pretty good if you like sci-fi. Worth checking out. It's not like the best movie out there, but it's uh, I like to give it a recommendation every time I see Solaris, the champion. All right, here we go again with the A2. Decreased defense on everybody except for that dude. Who is that dude anyway? Is that Drown Bloat Wraith or something like that? I don't know. I forget, I forget who's... I forgot their avatars. Now we can come in and we can... Ugh. Two cold hearts on the loose. I don't like that. I'm going to go A3 with Ash Walker. Try to land a stun on one of them. We do. I'm actually going to come in here and pop off the other uh, cold heart so I can reduce her turn meter and eat one shot to the face there. Everybody else is stunned so we can recover a little bit here. We can go in with Ruthless Amb or Deep Ambush, excuse me. And now we're right back to who's that hiding in the corner again? These rares sometimes. 
Uh, Eris. Okay. Well, Eris, we definitely want to get rid of. So let's try to kill her. Ah, again, that A3 is so close, but no cigar. Uh, okay, hope we can kill them both right there. We do. Excellent. Let's go here. Abalaster. Pop her off. And I think that's Drown Bloat Wraith, and I'm not 100% sure. Let's take him out. All right, now we're in a perfect position for the third wave here. We have the AoE of Elhane. Again, she lands nothing, though, in terms of stuns. And now we have one unstunned. Uh, who's that? Is that Magistar? No, I don't. Who is that? Hospitaler? <laughs> anyway, let's go. Who else is the other dude unstunned? Uh, one, okay, the same champion, who I don't know. Let's just go in with the stun here. Turn meter uh, reduce. And then A1. Hopefully we can land a stun right there. We don't. It's not a big deal. Come in again. And now we're cooking. Look at this. Everybody is stunned right now. And it might not seem, you might be asking yourself, well, it doesn't seem like dagger is that important, Ash. I mean, everybody else is the one controlling everything. But let me tell you, this would take a lot longer. We'd be more reliant on a lot more stuns on this team. We have to, you know, be basically more reliant on RNG, uh, in other words. If we didn't have decreased defense on everybody, it's allowing me to breeze through this and not have to rely so much on stuns to be the only way that we can win these battles. Saves me a lot of time, honestly. Uh, so there it is. We are officially full auto and we are done. Uh, and again, Dagger puts out, you know, not a ton of damage. She was out damaged by Soulbond, out damaged by Elhane, out damaged by Kurzad, uh, basically almost everybody. But she was able to keep herself alive nicely. I think she only took one hit, maybe, maybe two, uh, throughout the battle. But she just let everybody else do their thing faster, more efficiently, uh, which is great, right? It, 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 solid champion, definitely not end game or anything crazy you know uh not an auto six star for reasons that we spoke about in today's video but definitely a competent option for an aoe decreased defense and the big version of decreased attack as well hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video keep the champion guide request coming in the comments below much love and as always take care guys